So I had a special request about going over the electrical system. So I'm making a video today on how that works out. So the first step is I'm going to clear all this out. One thing I found that was kind of interesting is this is one of my window inserts. And if I put it right here, everything disappears. Okay. And I got, I made room here for my drone and all its parts fit in there real nicely. So I'm going to pull everything out and I'll get back. All right, next step is pull the carpet out and uh, take the lid off the storage box beneath. Because you're gonna need a lot of room to work. So take this out, flip it up, just take it all the way out. You can kind of see what we've got here. I've got the inverter here, some great storage tools, things you don't really need to get to every day. So I'm going to pull this box out. What you have to do to do get the box out is there's this little plate right here. And underneath it, pop that out, save that, important. And then you've got a handhold to pull the drawer out. So I'll get that out next. So in your car, you're going to have a setup like this box is right over here in this corner. So you just take the top off, and down in the bottom there'll be one screw, and mine was just finger tight, but you could use a socket set to get that screw out. And you're just, you're not going to use any parts of these, so take these out, put them in storage. What you are going to have underneath, though, here, you're going to have the stud that that, that that was screwed onto. And that was the only thing I really had to modify, so I took a hammer and just bent the screw over, because it's welded to the car. So that made room for another battery. Now, I'm going to take this piece out here. You have to kind of pop this piece loose and wedge this thing out. You're going to reuse this. And what you have here is the original battery that comes with it. And it's tucked back in here. And you're going to have to add on to that. Now, that's a proprietary battery. And it, it's, it's an interesting battery. You can't buy it at the local part supply went everywhere and they sell only Toyota sells it. It's a unique battery in that it's both a deep cycle and a starting battery. And I'll show you over here. They actually print the ratings for both on there. For the cold cranking amps and the and the amp hours. So I ended up they do sell one battery online. It'll work, but I decided since it was the same price, I decided just to get another Toyota battery. So I just went down to the dealership and paid them the 200 bucks for another battery. So I set the battery down in there, and behind here, you can't really, I don't think you'll be able to see it. Behind here, there's a, a flange with an eyelet. And what I did was took two, two bands of zip ties and zip tied it in there. And it's really firm, but wait to do that to the end because you're gonna need to get access to these two terminals here. You remove this cover here. You can pop it here with your finger and just pull that off and set that aside. And then you can see everything. All right. Remember, you are dealing with, dealing with a live battery, so be careful. So Toyota uses these very special little terminals that are smaller than the rest. Could not find any of these clamps anywhere. Um, and so I hate buying stuff from the Toyota dealership. So uh, you can use this one, but on the other one, I had to come up with a different solution. So there's the, that's the negative, and it's just grounded here to the chassis back here. Be gentle with these screws. It's, the sheet metal is very thin. If you do strip it, just buy a bigger screw, you'll be fine. And here's your positive here, which I tapped into right there. Okay, so the first thing I did, um, was over after I put this battery in, I ran a ground wire. And you don't have to run a ground wire to the battery. You can run it anywhere to the chassis. So my ground wire, I tapped in. This, I don't know what this is, but I tapped in, unscrewed that bolt, ran it here, it goes up behind the battery, and it taps in on this back wire right here into here. So what I had to do, since I couldn't get those tiny connectors, and I've got this covered, um, is I had to just drill a hole through this and it worked fine. And then I used stainless steel screws and, bolt and um, lock nut and washer. So on the positive, so the positive, 
comes down out of here. Runs down here and I zip tied it. Zip tied it in. Runs down here. Runs along the bottom, snakes through here. And then I ended up tapping the positive in right here. And they do provide this nut here. So I was able just to unscrew this and just screw right into there. So the next one was to put the inverter in and the inverter doesn't sit here, but I've got it hardwired in. So it actually sits in the bucket when you put the bucket back in. So that was very straightforward again. So that comes from the other battery. Just tapped in here and wired it in to the inverter. Same thing. Next step was coming up with a safe 12 volt system. I also wanted to have five volt USB set up. So the easiest thing I found to do was to buy this ground bar. And that just allows you so you don't have to keep running ground wires to the battery. So that's pretty cool. It just has all these screws down. And then you bring your main wire in the top or the bottom. And that comes down. And that goes to the ground plug over here. And then this is your fuse box. So this is your fuse box, and I just pulled the cover off. And right now I'm just using two, and I've just covered this up with tape again, just for safety. So I've run two things. So the positive runs in the bottom here. It goes down, around, comes back around, and goes back on here on the positive on the battery. So anything you want to put in, let me pull this tape off. So anything you want to add, you just add to those lugs. And there's, on this particular one, there's six, but you can get different sizes. So then, you want to get, make sure you get a heavy duty. Sorry for this shadow, but it's wide angle lens with this light. So you want to get, this I actually got from Walmart. Make sure you get a heavy, heavy duty 12 volt. Check your amperages for what you're going to do. Because if you just buy one, off the shelf, they're gonna be really thin wires and they're gonna overheat, you're gonna have problems. So make sure it's a thick one. So this particular one comes off of here, comes into a 12 volt plug right here. And I screwed it. You can screw into this stuff. The marks don't show when you pull the screws out. It's kind of cool. And so I got a three outlet USB plug again, which is, you know, pay extra for it. And it's got the higher wattages. I think it's a three, uh, a three amp, and two two amps so that goes into these cool little switches that i got at ebay and so they run my lighting so they have backlights so when they're off the little backlight isn't on so this one goes to my reading light right here these two go to over the the lights that go over the doors and then this one is the light that goes over here and these lights are so cool you cut them to length and you just tack them underneath the rubber strip here. So I pull the sticky stuff off and then you just kind of stick, just kind of wedge them. Let me turn this off here. So you just kind of wedge it under here. Because if you don't, they just tend to, the glue tends to give out and they just start falling off and sagging. So, and same thing over the door. Now this last one, and this is a super heavy duty. You can see the thickness of the wire, and that'll give you a clue. This one I run, this goes to the refrigerator. So when I want to run the refrigerator, I just plug this in here. All right, so I'm gonna start reassembling everything and putting it back to where it is. So make sure you put your red cover back on for safety there, and it'll fit back on. Just kind of make sure where you got your wires at. Um, and then I'm gonna put this back in. Okay, so I've got the drawer or the whatever the storage bin put back in. Ran the wires under this little holder. So now you have the inverter. And also, I went ahead and I taped up all the electrical exposed electrical connections because you're not going to be able to reuse this. I mean, you can, but it's going to flop around. You could probably, you know, put a couple screws or zip tie it if you want to use it. That'd probably be the best way, but I just leave it out. So for the microwave, I tried, it's a 700 watt microwave. I tried a 750 watt inverter, wouldn't work. Tried a thousand watt inverter, wouldn't work. So I found I had to bump up to a 2000 watt inverter to get the microwave to work. Now this is a modified sine wave. Um, I didn't do my homework. If I did it again, I would definitely get a true sine wave because you can kind of find one for about the same price. 
the microwave makes some strange sounds, but it works. So that may be something to look at down the road. Now, for whatever inverter, make sure you put the switch to turn it on towards the front because you're only going to be able to open the front part of the bin when you got everything in. So you want to be able to reach over there and just flip it on like that. And then these do draw power when they're on and nothing's running, so always turn it off. So also now, I screwed it in. There's some flanges there where I screwed that in, and I'll screw in this side so it doesn't flop around. So here's everything loaded back in, and I find these shoebox size ones work perfect. They fit really well. So the stuff I really don't need to get to very often, I put way up here. Stuff that I think I'm going to need to get to, I leave in the backs again because you can open that hatch. Don't forget to put this cover back down here. So we got the cover back in, plug in your extension cord, you can wrap it around different places, tuck it in, and by the way, this is, this is my whole toolbox. I have got my tools down just to the bare minimum. Everything I need fits in the way up there, and it has served me well for years. So now we got the carpet back in, carpet tucks nice under here, they stick out. And then here's just the flap that goes over the battery. I know some people won't like that, but this is rubber coated. Um, you could you could do better than that, but I'm trying to get all the storage squeeze every inch So let's put the microwave back in one thing I did do for microwave safety is the microwave was flopping around a bit So I found this great little flange here and the microwave happens to have the same thing in a screw So we'll attach that microwave installed and here's that flange I was talking to you about how that mates up just perfectly got very lucky with that Now one thing you want to do is build it up you can have some storage underneath it because you need to clear your mattress so when the door opens you can get at that so here we're all back assembled the blanket fits nicely there some wet wipes the microwave with the door that opens easily your food storage the phantom here the parts for that back in there and here i have a mesh bag for dirty clothes so that worked out pretty well Thanks for watching.